is my new iPhone X. Come on. What's that? <laughs> you should choose one. iPhone X or X-Men? Uh, iPhone X. iPhone X. Definitely, okay. yes. What would you give as a birthday present to Tiger Woods? Uh, new back. <laughs> new back? New back? You don't like the one he's got now? No, yeah, because he's always injured. Oh, okay. <laughs> what is the meaning of the life? What is the meaning of life? Yes. Um, I don't know. You don't know? No. There's no meaning. No, th there's a meaning, but uh, I think you only know it in the end, when all the dots connect and then you look back and you say it made sense. Okay. Imagine you would meet Senna one day. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. there, maybe, I don't know, somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. What would you tell him? Uh, first, that he was an inspiration for, for, everyone, you. for me and for everyone. It's, it's uh, really an example of someone that over overcome his difficulties, his natural difficulties, to, to become the best. And I think that's because of hard work and it's, it's not just talent because he worked very hard and he wanted something so bad that he said okay. I, I need to I need to have it and then that's it okay okay good that's, that's what, what I would say to you how do you understand the ultimate happiness how do I the understand yes. what is ultimate happiness yes uh, that's a difficult question and it's like being fulfilled inside. It's in the, in the store, short answer, it's being absolutely fulfilled. Fulfilled inside. inside. Yeah. Okay. By your own means. Yes. Okay. And uh, how do you understand the utmost grief? Did it? Sorry, <laughs> I didn't understand the question. The other? And then, uh, how do you understand the grief? The biggest grief you can have in your life? Biggest grief? Uh, I don't know, losing a son. That's the uh, okay. for everyone that is a, a a dad. It's I think it's the worst that can can happen. Okay, what do you value the most in men? In men. In men. Honesty. Honesty. Yeah. And in women? In a woman. Um, oh, it's interesting for me. <laughs> what is it? In a woman. Everything. Intelligence. Intelligence. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Mm. If you can change one thing in yourself, what would it be? Just one thing. One thing? Yes. I don't know. No, <laughs> come on. One thing. Uh, but you mean in my physical appearance or in my personality? In your personality or in your physical appearance? Uh, well, sometimes I just... I don't take decisions instantly. That's what I, I would change. Okay. Not that I, I, I regret the decisions I made, but uh, I would like them to do them faster because sometimes I lose opportunities because I delay. The, I'm very slow in all the process of, uh, of my own self-approval of something that I need to do. So to do. is it due to Portuguese way of life or due to yourself? Mm -hmm. To myself. To yourself. Yeah. Okay. Um, who is your closest hero, like in a book or in a movie? My closest, closest to you? Hero. Oh. James Bond. <laughs> James Bond, no, no, for sure. Uh, I don't know, really. I don't know, that's so many inspirations. I mean, I just don't know. Maybe. The end of this interview, I'll let you know, but I really don't know. But, I mean, so many. I mean, Shantaram. So <laughs> Shantaram could be. Could be. The book, yes. Shantaram is nice. Okay. How would you like to spend the last hour of your life? Um, <laughs> so imagine, right no, no, now no, no, I'm telling no, you, this no, is no, the no, last no. hour of your okay. life. Uh, driving a race car. Wow, <laughs> that was great. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking like mm, something boring, like a Rowan, no, staying no, no, with no, my no. kids. No, of course, I would say goodbye to everyone. <laughs> I would kiss everyone that I love. Uh, <laughs> but then I would uh, get inside the race car, put my helmet on and just step down. Okay, 
That is good. I knew I was going to die anyway, so I could take all the risks. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, thank you very much. And hello, everyone. I would like you to present a good friend of mine, brilliant lawyer, maybe one of the best here thank in you. Portugal or in this one, Fernando Beck. Gosh. Okay, Fernando. Um, and thank you for coming to Lisbon and for the interview, of course. Oh, thank you. Yeah. About your job, about your career. Mm, known you for a while, mm. and I have this feeling that with each new case, you have a feeling: was it going to be a winning case or a losing one? No, it depends on the case. Uh, if it is a court case, a litigation, uh, of course, it's a question of winning or losing. It's always about winning or losing. You're representing one of the parties, and of course, one wants to win, and the other one wants to wants to win also. So it's uh, it's or, or not losing. It depends on the position. That's a different different story. But I don't do just as a sports lawyer. I don't do just uh, litigation. So, and mainly, I don't do litigation. I do a lot of uh, club investment, club acquisition. I work with agents, with players, I do contracts. Uh, so it's slightly different. Um, of course, you have someone. On the, always someone on the other side. Okay. Okay. Uh, you represent someone. You have uh, uh, the interests of your client that you, you need to know and uh, and to, to to respect. But then, of course, on the other side, there's always someone. But it, it's not a question of uh, of winning or losing. It's a question of, of compromise. Uh, I think I have one one good thing is that I can I can talk to enemies very easily. You can talk to enemies. I can talk very to easily. Enemies. Yes. So I can becoming friends. No, it's not a question of becoming friends. It's a question of becoming someone that they can trust, even if they hate the other party. So I can I can put myself in the middle and uh, talk to both, and uh, and uh, I think I can do that very easily. So you have this uh, spying part of your character. Yeah, I think so. Yes. Okay. Okay. Can you call yourself as someone who goes with the flow, especially in your career? Hmm. Or sometimes you you suffer. You know, no, um, people usually going with divide. The flow is, is not something bad. It's uh, no, it's it's very good. So people usually divide into parts. The one who goes with the flow, the other one. I can go with the flow until until I think that the flow is 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 yours. Exactly. If I think the flow is not taking me where I should, then I step out. Yes, okay. and I find another flow. <laughs> Start again. Yeah. So you have ma have many times in your life did you find another flow? Yeah, no, many times. Many times. Many times, yes. But you never changed your career. Well, I was always a lawyer because that's that was the options I made with some some limitations that I had from my youth, my education, whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's. Uh, but then when I, I realized that I could be a, a good lawyer, so uh, then I decided to, to bet everything on that. Well, but no, I never tried anything else. But I moved a lot of uh, law firms. I've uh, started a new practice. So, I mean, you can have the same profession and, mm -hmm. and change things and do things differently. So inside? Inside, yes. Yes, okay, okay. Good. So, do you make a revision of your law career? If I make a revision? Uh, yes. Of like yeah. some kind of review. Yes. How often? Once a year. Once, yeah, once a, a year. At least once a year. Once think, a year. I think of what I'm doing and if it it's the right way, what I've achieved or okay. not, where I failed, what I need to improve. Yes, at least okay. every year I, I try to do that. Yeah. Okay. And um, usually during this time of the year. <laughs> on this side. Yeah. So you, I'm in the right period. Mm, yes. Okay. And um, so far, do you satisfy with yourself? Is it lawyer? Well, uh, <laughs> satisfied and yes, of course, because uh, I think currently I'm regarding what we said as uh, one, one of the best uh, sports lawyers in Portugal and I'm happy with that because I started from scratch uh, eight years or nine years ago, so it's, it was a, a big achievement. I, I love my team and I, I really like the law firm where I, where I work at, uh, but uh, of course I'm I'm happy with what I've achieved. I don't know the, 
the day the day of tomorrow maybe there are other opportunities but of course I'm uh, I'm uh, ready to embrace them if, if they come along okay so you, when I was preparing to take an interview with you yeah. I watched a couple different interviews you already gave mm -hmm. in your life and um, in Portuguese yes yeah. uh, yes <laughs> some was in Portuguese it was quite difficult you know I'm not yeah. yes I I still know just, I don't know, maybe 10 phrases in your language. Well, anyway, uh, I watched the episode of, um, correct my pronunciation, Jogu? Is it Jogu Economic? Yes. Jogu Economic. Yes. Okay, uh, with your participation, of course. Mm -hmm. And I might be wrong, but at the first part of the program, yeah. you took a leading position and all the rest were just following you. Mm -hmm. Or like, really leads that you know yeah maybe because I was more prepared than because it was my topic really it was something that I really know about it was, we were talking about club ownership and, well I, I, I think it, it's true what you what you just said because I, I was more prepared than the others on, on the topic so I knew what I was talking about more than the, okay. than the interview because it, and it, the, the interviewer that's a that uh, program is part of, uh, of an economic newspaper and basically they talk about uh, economic uh, topics and uh, the economy and finance uh, whatever so they're not that much prepared to 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 <laughs> maybe talk about the specific topic of, uh, of sports law and uh, yes I agree with you okay and then in the second part mm -hmm. it seems you lost this position being a leader mm. I don't know, maybe, yeah. Maybe I was tired, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> maybe that, uh, uh, the second part was... Yeah, it was the same topic, but then... No, but maybe I realized that uh, I already said everything, so I, I just <laughs> need to let the others speak, because uh, otherwise I'll, I'll monopolize all the... All the <laughs> yes, <laughs> all my the question story is a bit different. Yeah. Um, it felt that you were less confident. And my question is, mm -hmm. do you feel yourself confident only when you can feel yourself like a leader or behave like a leader or represent yourself like a leader? Mm, no, I, I don't see. I don't see myself uh, in that way. No, I can. I can. I can be a leader if I have to. I can. I feel comfortable with it. I can. I can work with, with in a team with someone else and receive instructions or orders for for anyone. So and mm -hmm. I feel comfortable also with that. So I really, I'm I really a, f a flexible person. So I, I don't regret. Uh, oh no, if I'm not in number one, no, I can be number one if I have to, uh, and I can be number two or number three or number five or whatever, and or be part of a team if if I have to. So it's it's not. Uh, I really don't feel. Uh, now, if I have all the lights on me, I'm happy. If I don't, I'm not unhappy, or the other way around. No, I'm really, I'm really a flexible person, so I don't mind. Uh, uh, so, in other way, you can lead and you can follow. Yeah, both. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I had uh, leadership roles in my life, and uh, I had uh, also roles as a member of teams, but uh, it's okay. uh, not an issue. Okay. So, my next question is, it's nothing but religion, but still. Mm. In our past, we had two leaders. One was Jesus, the other one was Moses. Mm -hmm. Which style is more close to you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I know don't you would know. be stuck. No, that's a difficult one. I don't know. Maybe Jesus, because I like him better than Moses, but that's just a question of because I like him, not because mm. I see myself as <laughs> as, as Jesus. Um, and so it's, no, no answer for that one. I'm sorry. Okay, okay. <laughs> I'm just, uh, need to touch my name written in Hebrew. I'll still, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're not just a lawyer. You're also a son mm -hmm. of probably one of the greatest lawyers also. Yeah. How do you influence you? Uh, a, a lot. I mean, a lot. I learned a lot from my from from my from, from, my, dad. from my dad. He was a, he was a very good lawyer, one of the best lawyers in in, in Portugal. And uh, across that period, in the eighties and in the nineties, so he was always at the top. He founded a very good law firm that 
now disappeared because now now he's retired many years ago. Mm -hmm. And then um, yeah, but I, I learned a lot from him. I, I started there, and uh, I learned a lot from the team. And um, we worked really hard those days. It was uh, not like now. N not like now. No, no. We we work much much more. Okay. And today, and there is no no technology to help us. Nothing. Uh, nothing. No computers. Uh, so it, it it was a different world. On, on the other hand, every, everything everything was more slow. More slow than now. More slow. Even even here. Yeah, you know why? Because um, now people they, they want an answer very fast. They call yes. you, they send you a message, they send you an email, and they expect you to be available and to answer anywhere, anytime. It was not the question of it was not what was going on in the in, in the early nineties. You, you had fax messages. You mm -hmm. would write them down in the computer. So the client was expecting maybe an answer in two, three days. And that was completely acceptable. Okay. He sent you a fax, you read it, you study, and the fax was something it was not a fast answer in an email. It was something that you had properly written, uh, legislation reviewed and checked, maybe uh, you had time to read a book or something. Um, so the answer was like a certain number of pages, depending, of course, on the topic, but it was a proper legal opinion. It was mm -hmm. not something that you just, uh, what is the term for something? Then you pick up your phone and you reply, oh, and it, it's a fast answer. So yeah. nowadays you feel that you don't, you, don't, you don't have time to study anymore, to, 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 to read the, the jurisprudence, to read legislation. And, uh, to uh, read even articles. Yeah, so it's it's really uh, the other day, and now that you ask, the other day I found an old book of uh, of uh, banking law and finance law that I had in the in the nineties, and I opened it, and I just everything it was written everywhere. Mm -hmm. It was written. It was studied. It was it was uh, marked. It had uh, uh, references between the articles. So it just nowadays it's just like we don't have time anymore for that, and that's. In a Do way, you miss it? Not, uh, it's not a question of missing it. it. It worries me because you feel that you know more things, but you're mm -hmm. less prepared in, in, in the substance, in the, mm -hmm. in, the, in, the, in the legal details and the legal aspects. Because nowadays you don't have time anymore for that. So everything is like, it's very fast, very fast. You have a case, mm -hmm. you go study it very, very fast to, to give an answer, fast answer. and. Uh, and then you go again and you do the same and you're answering different questions at the same time, different topics. Uh, of course, when you work in a team, of, you have to coordinate things, but, but even though everything is, is, is faster and, and I don't know, that deep as it used to be. Okay. okay. So everything is more superficial. Okay, I see, I see, I see. So, um, back to your dad. <laughs> yeah. um, what was like the main, the biggest lesson you got from him? Um, well, as a, as, a, as a lawyer, it was, I mean, his honesty, as a, honesty. I learned a lot, yes, I learned a lot from him, and uh, how, to, how, to, how to be independent mm -hmm. from your client, uh, when you have, you have a limit, which is the law, and uh, the client can ask you to do whatever you want, of whatever he wants, but there's always a limit, and some, there's a, a, a certain phase where you have to say, Listen, I'm not going to do. I'm not going to do that for you. And he and he, he tells you, but I'm paying you to do that. And you have to answer. Listen, that's illegal. That's against the law. I'm not going to do that. So if you want to do that, you you go and find someone else to do that. Okay. Maybe there's another lawyer that is is able to help you with that. But and I saw my my dad doing that to uh, when I was a trainee, and I saw that uh, he, he did that to to quite a few clients, and I was really wow. That's, so you really, you really, and I always uh, um, had that with me. I mean, if one of the best things of this profession is that you are independent, mm -hmm. and you you only work to um, to someone until you want, and that is the best part of it. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can always say, "I don't want for you anymore." But Find someone else. Don't you think there is um, everyone has its own price? No, not at all. No, 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 no. That's what I said. Some things, even they, if they try to buy you, they're illegal, and so there's no way, there's no way to circumvent that. Even, well, even <coughs> if the price would be the life of your son, 
Criminal situation is some, mm. someone <laughs> threatening you or <laughs> something only, because in real life, uh, that's not, no, no, yes, not real it's life. real life. That's not, we were talking about the legal profession and how it works. Okay, mm. what you said is, uh, is, is something different, so there's no relation between the two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that I learned from him. That I learned from him. Have you ever asked yourself how you dealt with acts in your case, in any of your cases? No, never, no. never. Mm, never thought I asked. <laughs> so you never, um, you never heard his voice in your head. Like no, I heard his voice many times because of this influence that I've just mentioned. Okay. Um, just people nowadays they think that a lawyer mm -hmm. is someone that they pay or that the, the client pays to do what they want, and this is kind of public opinion. Oh, you're a lawyer. Even nowadays, and I, I know, I know. For instance, you mentioned interviews I, I've given, and um, sometimes I've, I've, I just gave my my opinion based on the applicable law and regulation, and I was criticized. People saying, "Ah, oh, no, you work for someone else. You work for this, so you said that because you represent this interest." No, no. It's, mm -hmm. I was giving my independent opinion. As a, as a lawyer based on the applicable law and this is my legal opinion and I'm independent to do that I'm not doing that because someone is paying me to to say this and that, that's wrong and, and, uh, and this is a lot of uh, people in public opinion they think that a lawyer is someone that is paid to to give his opinion no you're not you're not just paid to, to give your opinion and if this opinion is against the law then you either don't don't give it or you have to to reconsider what you, what you're doing Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you never break law. Only the only the <laughs> only the yes um, the I mean the the road road uh, <laughs> legislation <laughs> like uh, speed limits and things like that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Try to imagine your dad now. Mm -hmm. One more question about your dad. And try to see you at yourself through his eyes. Yeah. Do you think he's happy about you? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Like, really proud? I think he's proud. I mean, I, mean, I, I have uh, two sisters and one brother, and I think he's happy of all of us. I mean, we did a good job. In the end, we did a very good job. Okay. <laughs> And apart from you, that do you have um, any other lawyer who influence you? Uh, well, well, maybe not some lawyer one, from not past. One, not one, not one, because I, I've, I've moved law, law firms around. I learned in the early days. I learned a lot mm -hmm. from uh, great lawyers I work with, like Cesar Bassamonte, uh, uh, like um, Francisco Marques Bon, like um, uh, Carlos Olavo. Um, so I, I was, it was really good to, to, to learn from them. Those maybe were the bigger, bigger influences in the early days of, of my legal career, yes. Okay. Um, your country had been run by a um, dictatorship called Estado Novo mm -hmm. yeah. during 41 years, if not mm -hmm. mistaken. Yeah. And it was finished with a uh, red flower revolution. Mm -hmm. 1974. 1974. You're yeah, right. Okay. Good that you know your history. <laughs> so, uh, people were fighting for this famous Libertad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I always say, and, and I really believe in it, that people or anyone, anyone in this world, can be really freed more than they're freed within. Do you think, or do you agree with me? that people of Portugal were not really free with seeing if they let it happen to their country? Mm. Well, yeah, come on. We're talking about something that happened 40 something years ago. And uh, 
we have this joke about uh, where were you in the 25th, uh, 25th of April? And uh, so I was uh, three years old. <laughs> I don't really remember. And um, you were three, not four. Well, it happened in in April, so I only became four in, in December. Okay. So I was three, three something. Yes, it, it's. I mean, of course, living under I, I cannot imagine what it is to live under a dictatorship. It's just something I really I don't know what it is. But I wouldn't want to try it, of course. Uh, Churchill said that uh, democracy is the worst of the system. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, the, it's not probably. The, probably the worst, but it's, it's the best possible. So it's, it's uh, and, and this is what we have. And, uh, but I agree that uh, well, Portugal made a lot of progress in, in these 40 years. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was really, in, in the 70s, it was really an undeveloped, gray, dark country. Everything focused on the state and everything. There was no public initiative, um, no freedom of, uh, or, uh, of opening a business, of, uh, of do whatever you can. So it was, it was good. And, and over the last, these last years, I mean, with a lot of mistakes, but I mean, Portugal made a lot of progress. And that's for sure. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. Okay. And uh, how's the law changed since it's the time? Well, a lot, especially a after lot. joining the European Union change all our legal system to comply with the with the like all the rest countries yeah okay so, I see but um, it became from a, from a, a closed economy to market economy and mm -hmm. of course what 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 uh, implies to change all the law to have a, an open a, an open market economy so it's, it's really that is part of the European Union so there's mm -hmm. big differences over the last year yes okay and uh, if we are talking about sport and sport system, mm -hmm. has it changed? I mean, uh, don't you think that Portugal at that time was like um, on a better position? Most the country was mo um, much more stronger than it is now. You mean uh, when before the before the revolution? Yes. It, it, it's difficult to compare. I mean, it's it's like. Uh, like comparing to to sportsmen uh, in different areas and say one is 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 better than the other. It, it's it's just different. I mean, it's, it's really you can't compare uh, um, a modern economy, a modern country in the, in, in the twenty first century to a closed economy mm -hmm. uh, that were living from the money that was coming from the colonies uh, forty something years ago. So it's really. You cannot say, and I hate those those uh, people. <laughs> sometimes say, "Oh no, we should have uh, Salazar, which was the name of the dictator, yeah. back because if he was here, he would change everything." I mean, it's just not possible. So it's it's really uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> a discussion that really doesn't make sense. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like we have what we have, and I think we don't need to change. Mm -hmm. um, right, of course. Okay. You know, recently I was in Porto, mm -hmm. and uh, I heard several times people want to have someone like Putin here. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Do you think your country needs a strong man? We need strong <laughs> governors. So we need a strong prime minister with charisma. We need, of course, and I really don't, don't, don't like this one. Uh, we need that we need that. Uh, uh, What's his uh, name? Antonio uh, Costa. Uh, we need uh, we need a strong president of the republic, um, but of course, and, and people with charisma that can really uh, that people can really follow. And th this is what we need. Mm -hmm. We need ho honest uh, honest politicians that are really concerned about the country mm -hmm. and the way the country evolves and develops, and not just their personal interests or their making money out of their politic. Uh, employment or politic position, whatever, or, or working for someone, that, that's, that's wrong, that's bad. Mm -hmm. What does a free man mean to you? A free man is someone that has his car key in his pocket and can leave. Oh, it's always at, about at, God. At any moment can leave. And this is, this is... Uh, Do you have this problem? No, I don't have that problem. 
well, actually, I don't have my car key now in my in my pocket, but that's something something good. Um, uh, Sakarneda was a very good uh, uh, right wing uh, politician from uh, PSD, mm -hmm. Social Democrat Party, and uh, he, he used to say that. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I can leave whenever I want. So it's like okay, you can be involved in things, but. Uh, with the freedom to leave, if you if you say okay, I'm not no longer interested, and, and whatever you do, if you if you have that capacity, that is freedom. Okay. Do you have this capacity in your life? Uh, well, in some aspects, yes. Maybe in others, don't. But uh, but yeah, that's a cat. <laughs> okay. In general, yes. Okay. Have you ever been a client of a lawyer? <laughs> um, no, never. Never? Never. Never in your life? Never, no. Would you like to try? Uh, no. No, it's like... It's very expensive. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new experience for you. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> sometimes, I, yes, sometimes I joke and I say, well, if I make the Euro millions, uh, oh, no, come on. <laughs> I, will, I will no longer be a partner of, uh, of Abreu and then I'll be a client of Abreu. So okay. I can call and ask for services, and uh, and uh, that would be interesting. Okay. <laughs> Have you ever been officially banned from the case or from the court hearing room? No, no, never. No. Be honest. No, 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 never. You can tell the story. <laughs> no, I was never banned from a courtroom, and uh, no one. Um, took me a, a legal case before it was uh, closed. I lost cases, I, I, I won cases, but no, not, never, never. No, never, never happened. Okay, I'll try to believe you. Yeah, no, no, no. that's true. Do you agree with the following? The cell not only limits, but also protects. Well, yeah, I agree in a way, but I mean, it's just, Protects from what? Depends on what we're talking about. Some criminals that have to be. I mean, we in Portugal, we have we were probably the first country in the world to banish uh, uh, death penalty. You know, uh, in the 18, 18, 19th century, uh, yeah, 19th century. So um, I don't know. I can agree with that sentence, but in some cases, of course, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. All right. Well, um, talking about being good and successful lawyer, mm -hmm. do you think it's it can be achieved nowadays? Yeah, of course. I mean, you can uh, achieve you can achieve success in every in everything you do in every in every area. Any time. Yeah. Any time. Absolutely. Any time. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then imagine very talented. And hardworking. I don't know, a boy or girl from. Give me the name of uh, some village here or small town in Portugal. In Portugal, uh, I don't know. Small town, Evora. Evora. Mm -hmm. Imagine a boy from Evora is watching us now and he's dreaming to become a lawyer. Mm -hmm. Successful, of course. Mm -hmm. Does he have any chances to become one? Without yes. knowing anyone. No, no, he has, yes. Without having money to pay for his studies? <coughs> yes. Yeah. So do you still have like this grant no, system so here? The, the universities are, are, are yeah, public universities where actually you don't pay. Or you don't pay. Small amount. Uh, so it's really, I mean, it, I of course the ratios say that people that, su that succeed in a new university they come from higher, higher social classes. Mm -hmm. That's that's the way it is because they're better prepared. They, they were better prepared during their life. Mm -hmm. With, but that doesn't mean that people that came from lower backgrounds, mm -hmm. if they study, if they work hard, they can get there. I mean, mm -hmm. the best, the best. And if you're talking about uh, the legal profession, I mean, the the big law firms they go to the universities and they get the best students. So if someone uh, it really is one of the best students in, in the law school. Okay. Yeah, he, he will have his opportunity for sure, for sure. Okay. Not because he's, he, he comes from uh, 
from uh, I mean as I said it is more difficult mm -hmm. because of the effort he needs to make because maybe it's not pre better prepared it's not a question of intelligence on the contrary mm -hmm. but uh, he will have his opportunity for sure I mean, mm -hmm. there are many cases of, uh, of uh, very good lawyers that I know that came from uh, from uh, small villages small families uh, mm -hmm. Uh, lower social, I don't like that, that yes, word, but yeah. uh, low so social environments, and they succeeded, and they're the best lawyers in the country, okay. some of them, yeah. Okay, okay. So can you give some tips to this boy? <laughs> like, no. look, look <laughs> straight, you can, uh, can give some know. tips. <coughs> Tip is... Uh, some advice. Is to, is to, to work hard and, uh, and, uh, and study as much as you can. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so thank you very much, Fernando. Thank you very much. Muito obrigada. <laughs> obrigado. Obrigado. Obrigado.